Today's Dilmar Tea Party is brought to you over a refreshing cup of Dilmar Spiced Infusions. Very good afternoon, welcome into day two of the Test Match Dilmar Tea Party time and it is New Zealand bowled out for 2.35 so India will resume their, will start their second innings after the tea break. But what I thought I'd do, because this is the last test where we get to do the Dilmar Tea Party, is to have a little bit of a reflection and also get some guys that have spent a fair bit of time behind the mic and also one hosting the show. So a couple of special guests is Simon Dool and Mark Richardson. Thanks very much, gentlemen, for joining me. Cheers, Craig. Thanks what for I've got, tea. guys, yeah, I've got tea. Well, I'll, I'll just tone this around. Mark, I've got you these two combined together because we've got dreamy and passion. So I thought you could do with a little bit more passion in what you're doing. A little bit of the... Has Mary been in touch? Well, uh, she uh, has, uh, yeah. Uh, and Dooley... More than that, <laughs> Dooley, we've just got balance for you, because that's what you bring. Well, thank just you very much. Balance that's, that's very, very kind yeah. of you. Yeah, there we go. We could go to some other ones as well, but we yeah. won't. But, uh, well, thanks very much, gentlemen. I mean, I won't get too sentimental, but this is the last uh, test match for on Sky TV mm. for maybe six years or so. But, uh, Simon, you've been the host of the Dilma Tea Party, and uh, you've been involved, I think, 2007 in commentary, so what's that, we're going on 14 years? 14 years of it, yeah, I think, um, I mean, like most of us, I guess, in our era, Mark's much the same, Marty Crowe was um, the, the, at the forefront of getting the commentary team together at those state, um, that stage, the late, great Marty Crowe, and he um, picked me up out of a radio show, asked me to do some television commentary, I jumped at it, and yeah, it's been a, a well, I won't say a whirlwind, it's been a great ride um, since then, managed to travel overseas, do uh, a lot of work overseas, World Cups, World Cup finals, um, you know, tours with New Zealand. I've followed this team around so much in the last uh, 8 to 10, 12 years and it's just been magnificent. I keep telling people it's a lifestyle that pays, it's not a job. Absolutely. I mean, you've hosted this show, Dolly, you were the host of the Duma Party for probably a good five years. Mm. Mark, I know you've hosted a few shows, but you've never actually sat in this seat, have you? No, I didn't do a particularly good job while I was doing <laughs> it, so they got rid of me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, I mean, you're t 2005 in commentary. Yeah. yeah, 2005, so pretty much 20 years. I still, um, it's, if I could describe it. You've really battled with numbers years. today, haven't you? Because yeah. 2005 yeah. to 2020 15 years. is probably 15. 15 years, yeah. yeah. I have had issues, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the, I'm actually on the pure camera, I'm, I'm getting a bit sleepy. Uh, I do, I remember that first day, and I reckon I'm lucky to be here. By the way, I consider the job a privilege. That's yeah. what it feels like. To do a job like this, uh, when you've been a cricketer and you, you get an opportunity to work in the commentary team, it, it simply is a privilege, and you never take it for granted. But I, I'm surprised I'm here, because I do remember in my first day. First of all, Martin Crowe said two things to me. He said, don't you dare commentate like you batted. So don't be don't be defensive, go out there, take risks and, and enjoy the job. And I, I, with all my broadcasting jobs, I try to remember that advice. The other thing he said, he said, this is your big opportunity. I'm going to put you in front and alongside Ian Smith and don't feel like you have to agree with everything he says. <laughs> So I didn't. I think I picked an argument with Smithy on my first day, and I'm surprised <laughs> I'm still here. Yeah. Dolly, I mean, uh, this is an industry you're learning all the time, and, and I've been very fortunate to learn from you too, as well as the other in the commentary box. But uh, I suppose the lessons that you were learnt, uh, you were taught uh, very early on, that sort of helped all the way through your broadcasting career? Um, coming from radio, I guess um, you, you tend to talk a lot in radio and, and have to explain what's going on. I mean, the TV side of things. Marty always said to me, and, and a bit of advice from others as well, is try and tell the viewers what they can't see, rather than telling them what they can see. So don't read the numbers on the screen, Mark. Uh, <laughs> just well, they have been, have I? <laughs> hang on, but <laughs> labour. I'll write that one down. <laughs> write that one down. Uh, yeah, don't tell the viewers what they what they can see because they're, they're watching the television. They can see what's going on. Try and try and find a way to tell them something they can't see. Explain what you know, having been there, done that. And um, you know, I get to to do this on the back of playing a few games for New Zealand. And um, you know, it's it's as Mark said, it is. It's a great privilege and and honour to be involved. I know you two gentlemen in our discussions probably don't have the greatest memory for remembering things in <laughs> cricket. I mean, the only thing you really remember is yourself, don't you, Mark? But <laughs> I'm going to ask you if you can remember some games on Sky that you've commentated that stick out for you. Oh, well, you spoke about it yesterday, and I think the greatest morning I had uh, was when Brendan McCullum walked out to try to get 300. Mm. It was just the energy. It was standing there in the morning, looking out and watching people in suits running down the street to get into the ground and <clears throat> I actually felt sorry for Brendan when he walked out that morning as I watched him because the expectation uh, that he must have been carrying and that's the worst pressure of all, the pressure of expectation. So that's, that one sticks out and we always think it'll be an international game but the other one that sticks out in my mind is when we covered the Ford Trophy Finals, so the domestic 50 over game 
and it was CD versus, I think, Auckland? Might have been Auckland? And it was Michael Mason, who played years and years. Played a few test matches and, and one day for New Zealand. He played years and years. He was a pretty useless batsman, good bowler. And it was his last game for CD. And he won it with the bat from nowhere. They scored 60 runs. They were about eight down, 60 runs off the last four overs to win it. And he got 40 of them. And it was just a great moment. I mean, I was standing with you, Dooley, when Brendan got a 300. We mm. went out in the over and stand. Amazing atmosphere, wasn't it? And one of those very much, uh, it was, you know, the hairs on the back of your neck stood up. And I was so pleased I didn't have to commentate it too well to muck <laughs> it up. But, I mean, standing with you, it was quite emotional, wasn't it? Yeah, that, that was a very emotional morning. Um, you know, obviously, uh, with, with Martin and the 299, there was, uh, there was emotion around that. There were so many people flocked to the Basin Reserve that day as well to watch that game against Sri Lanka. And everybody was hoping that it was Martin Crowe who would post the first triple century for New Zealand. Brendan got the honour and managed to do it and then I think uh, you know you saw that unfold afterwards the way he just he, he nicked out as well it was just the relief of getting there and then the Basin Reserve kind of emptied out everybody went home <laughs> again and and kind of forgot about it um my, I've got so many memories of games that I have been involved in I mean w recent World Cup final yeah I was standing sideline listening to Smithy and um and NASA commentate uh, on on that uh, the World Cup semi-final against South Africa at Eden Park um, two tied matches stick yeah. out for me in, in one day international cricket. The 340 uh, New Zealand England at Napier. Jamie Howe, local right. uh, CD lad with 139 in that game. I think Brendan got 50 odd opening the batting, but that was an incredible game. And the, e the Eden Park game against uh, India, going back to 2014, and we just saw Ravi Jadeja with a brilliant catch. He got runs at the back end of that game as well, and uh, and that was a 314 runs, I think that was, tied at Eden Park. And there's so many games that, that spring to mind with, uh, with the commentary. And, you know, you just, when, you, when you get to call those moments, I think when you get to call the big moments and, and you're involved in it, you feel like you're almost still out there playing and, and those are the special times. No, they certainly are. Right, we've got a competition. We need to get that done quickly, guys. Time is flying by. But uh, it's your chance to win, as you always do here on the Dilma Tea Party. And you just need to go and uh, we're spicing up summer. You can win a Dilmar Tea Party. First 11 pack. Uh, there are 11 packs to win across the Test Match Series. And there it is there. The New Zealand Black Cats versus India. Uh, you can just go to the website at the bottom, dilmar.co.nz forward slash D Party. Well, interesting, guys, when we uh, look at this Test Match, um, it's been a spicy pitch. So uh, hopefully we get to enjoy another one. It, uh, it's going to be an interesting last session, Mark. Batters, you have to dig in. Yeah, it's so cool that I think these sides have reached after the first innings at a great parity in the match. Uh, there's plenty of time left, so I, I think it's who wants... It's a case of, literally, who wants it more, who's prepared to apply themselves more, who's prepared to show the most patience, and I think uh, the, the, the best application of strategy... There you go. The best application of strategy, it's taken 15 years, <laughs> but I finally come up with something really good. We'll win this test. You might have been a little bit speaking a bit of pure peppermint. No, I've been on. I've been on the, on the confidence. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I, I know enough, Craig, to know that when you pick the bag up, having done the show, it's time to to wrap it up. There we are, Simon. We'll so, I know you've been in place. Hey, thanks, mate. gentlemen. Thank we could talk for a long, long time. Right, uh, no, actually, Mark, this this is my one, but <laughs> we'll give you one. It's a freebie. Hey, thanks, gentlemen, and we look forward Cheers, to the call this thanks. session. There we are, uh, Simon and Mark joining us. Uh, yeah, on uh, day two of the test match. When we come back.